Hello and welcome to part one of a new three-part series titled uh, North Park Ranch. Hope I haven't named two videos after this. I better check my inventory. But anyway, this is a barn uh, that I think I took this picture sometime back in North Park, Colorado, over by Walden. Today was block-in, so I concentrated on first figuring out where these shapes were going to be. And when you do a structure such as a barn, sometimes I notice with my students, sometimes they'll make it too big or too small, and then they get into the painting and they go, geez, it's not quite right. Spend some time in this session to get it not too big, not too small, but just right. I'm pretty much going with uh, what I see here on the monitor. I shrunk it just a little, and it seems to fit into my surrounding environment a little bit better, and that's why I made that choice. But hey, I get into all that stuff. Anyway, get outside and paint. Paint with your friends, get critiques, and don't be intimidated by a white canvas. All right, let's start painting. Okay, bye. Hello, and welcome to a new three-part series titled uh, North Park Ranch. And, um, this particular building I've, I've done from different angles, and uh, I think it's the same one. I've painted it from the other side of the road uh, up, up to the uh, left of this reference. But I like it because it's moody, and um, I gave it uh, the reference, I think, to uh, Dawn, and then she rediscovered it some years you know, recently, and I said, boy, I'd like to paint that. So um, we're going to go ahead and do that. So. Let's get started with blocking. I want to try to cover this, uh, looks like 8 by 16, um, with value color today. So, the thing about having structures, you've got to try to figure out where that structure is going to be. That it's not too big, not too small, but just right. And that's what we're going to do, is figure out where that structure is going to be. I'm going to get some transparent oxide red, some ultra blue, and some gray, dark gray, <clears throat> a little bit of white. Now, why did I put white in there? I don't want white in there. Excuse me. Let's go blue, a little bit of brown. That's all we need. I hope that's enough product. Let's go a little bit more blue, a little bit more brown. And I've got a, oh, kind of a worn down um, long flat, which is turning into a filbert because I've used it so much. And I'm just going to get just a little bit of turp in there to loosen up my brush. And I'm going to load that sucker up. I think I have a horizon line, but low center. And then I want to put some markers as to where the barn will end because it's more than half. Here's the center line, and I think it's more than, and it's kind of dropped. So let's uh, let's drop it a little bit. All right. So the peak of the guy is right here, I think. Maybe right here, and it's got to go up above halfway. And then it's got to come over here, and then it's got to go over here, and then the roof has to go this way, and it goes a little farther, and this comes back, and then this comes down to here, and here. And then there's a little building that comes off the side of it. I'm going to make this a little wider, this roof here. There we go, that looks a little better. And bring him here. Make these two sides equal, equal. Okay. I think that's going to work. I'm 
Okay, so we've got a dark here. We've got another dark coming off here. We'll do a roof on it. I think this is a little screwy, sorry. Gonna make this a little bit more level. There we go. And this is gonna be dark. And this is gonna be darker. I'm gonna get back and look at my shapes and see if it's working okay. And I'm going to check my stove here. See if it's still working. It's working. Now, I think when I got back that this looks a little small, so I'm gonna make it a little bigger. And I think my line's a little incorrect in the back, my roof line. And that looks a little better. Mo better. Now, there's a great big telephone pole right in here somewhere I think is kind of important. And then there's a little pole over in here. And then there's a fence line that starts over here somewhere. And then they start getting bigger. They almost touch the barn, they're so tall. And then there's really nice, well, some sort of growth of some sort of bushes. It comes out over here pretty significantly. And then a lot of other stuff that comes along here. There's a road over here. Now, what I want to pay attention to next is the, um, the line of mountains go up above the barn. And they kind of go up and work their ways down just a little bit and then I think up again. So they go down and then make it go up. Now behind there is like, a, it's a big dark here. And then over here, I think it's a different dark, but it ends up over into here. And sorry to dip below the camera, so you get an idea of what that's going to be. Okay. And then over here is the mountain. I think what I want to do is make one of these guys a little darker, and I think my values aren't correct yet, but I think I'm just still working on shapes. And I want to have a line that comes down here a little bit with some uprights. Okay, let me get into some more blue, ultra. And I'm going to go into some brown now, transparent oxide brown. And I'm going to get this really good dark over here. And then there's another dark right here. And then there's pretty good darks over in here. So right now we're still working on a kind of a gray value study. And once you get those lines filled in with, with value stuff, you get a better sense of uh, how that shape is working. So now I'm going to go in and darken up some other things. I'll use more blue and a little bit of gray, lighter gray, 
through. And I'm going to get this stuff back in here. And I think I may have brought this blue down too far. It's a little thinner. And it comes in on the slope here, I think. And then I'm going to go lighter and add a lighter blue. I just added some light gray to the mixture, more blue. And I'm going to add just a touch of Gamsol. I'm going to add some King's Blue to this mixture, lighten it up a little. King's Blue, or Royal Blue is another name for these products. Now, when I look at this reference, the most important thing to really define this barn is the white roof. So try not to cover that up with too much stuff. We're just going to leave that white roof alone. All right, I've got to look at my time and see how we're doing this. I'm doing a lot of talking and not much painting. Oh, i got 19 minutes left. Whew, time to get back. This looks... thing I see about the foreground um, post, it's really dark. So I'm going to go to blue and brown. So that was ultra blue, transparent oxide brown. There is some really dark stuff up here. And I think I lost some of my telephone poles. It's a little too thick for a telephone pole. But nonetheless, he's there. We have some uprights. And now we have just some grays here in the background, right in this area. So let me get some uh, light gray. And I have some of this, um, I had a contaminated brush from the stuff I just put on. And I'm going to... Make a nice dark gray back in here. And now there's all kinds of little shrubbery guys up in here that we need to keep in touch with. So I just use whatever gray I had in my brush. And we have some coming out from here too. All right, with these nice grays I still have here, let's squint at the reference and I see that there's a whole bunch of these same colors up in the sky, but lighter. So let's make a lighter mixture. I'm going to put this all together and remix it. So here's the darker side of it, and here's the lighter side of it. And there's also some, oh, some cerulean type mix colors up there also. So I'm going to go in with a bigger, stiffer brush called a number six long flat 2025 rosemary. And I'm going to go into the medium mixture, add a little cerulean to it, 
get just a little bit of Gamsol and I gotta go lighter kids. Yes I do. So there we go. And now I'm going to go in with the even lighter stuff. Adding more white. Adding more white. And just a touch of Naples to warm it up. Touch of Naples to warm it up. That's two touches. And maybe three. Maybe four. There, now I see it. some cerulean and give it some sort of blue look up in here. It's very subtle all these different colors up in the sky but as you can see if you follow my, my instructions here that a little bit of this can really help. I'm going to make some darker stuff and then some kings in it. A royal blue. Royal. And back to gray. It was a little too strong right there. Soften it. There we go here, we're softening it now. Let me get back and take a look at my value colors. So I got back to look at my drawing, my lines, and I filled it in, and now I'm looking at how that these different values are coming up. I do like these blues up there. They really add a lot. I'm going to go back to some darker stuff and bring that through and up. And dark over here. Dark over here. Add some moodiness to it. Let's go back to Naples. That was more than a touch, that's for sure. So I'm knocking it down just a little bit. You can see from my overhead that I've tried to keep that up. It's a little too strong. And I might as well add a little diazes and purple to this. Purple. Purple. And I will add some of that up in here. And I think the purple is just so super, super duper purple. Okay, now let's get down to the base of this painting and do some colors here. And that would require a cleaner palette. So I'm going to pick up all these guys, make it into one. And I'll probably use it later. Now I see a little bit of gold in the um, in the uh, snow, so I'm going to get a little bit of gold ochre. Uh, this is uh, two three two three one, I believe, from Rembrandt gold ochre. There it is. Mm. And just get a little bit of that and mix it into a lot of white. Here's a lot of white. And here's a little bit of gold. Gosh, that gold is strong. Oh, easy on that. Man, I just have, and look at that, how strong it is. And now I'm going to add a little bit of that blue to it.
and that's making a nice color. I'm going to go back to my number 6, 2025, and slop up this brush. And I need a little bit more cool in there. There we go. And it's just going to cover a lot of territory right now. So, I could be telling you stories about my weekend, but, you know, my weekend was wonderful. That's all I can say. Christmas season, went to my first Christmas party. And mostly artists, it's so much fun to have a bunch of artists at a party. Even though the host wanted to say, Did, don't bring anything, they still want to bring something. grazed out a little bit too. Now I'm going to go lighter on the roof, so I'm adding more white to my brush and I'm going to get some white and some more white and some more white right there. So it's got a little bit of the warm mixture I just had, and what I think is also necessary is to get a little bit of an edge <clears throat> on the far side. You can see it in the reference. I think it's right in here somewhere. And then it's right out here somewhere. Somewhere like that, I guess. I may have screwed that up, I don't know. But you get the idea. So let's go back to blue and brown. And let's get some telephone poles in here that are a little darker with the knife. The knife. And some darker stuff here in the foreground. Fences. And since we have the video is not ringing yet. Oh, seven minutes, man. Let's get some of the uh, shrubbery here. I need to go back to some gray, I think. And get some of this stuff in. And then I think there's some gold on top, so I'm going to add some ochre gold and add some of that in. I should be doing this with my brush. So it's kind of a gray and gold thing here going on. Well, I need darker grays in these foregrounds up in here. And I've got this brush full of the lighter uh, color from the roof. So you can see my challenge here, trying to get these in. And there's some good darks in here too. Now I'm going to go back to gold and probably too early to put this gold stuff in, but I just want to see what some worms in here would look like. I'm going to get a lighter gray <clears throat> and 
give a good edge to this barn. Boom. Boom. All right, that brings us to the end of part one, except for one little technique. We want to keep this stuff thin, okay? So we're going to smash this stuff down. And then pick it up. And that's going to keep it thin. So, see I do a little smashing with the side of my brush, then I pick it up. for trying to fix things. All right, that is the end of part one. Thank you very much for North Park Ranch part one. Fill up that canvas of yours and then let's get started on part two. All right.